I actually have a really big problem with people who ask, why are you single? And you think about it, how many men actually get asked? questions like that, like, why are you single? Those societal pressures that have been put and placed, especially on women, that make it so difficult for women to own the fact that I am single and actually be okay with that. That society has seemed to you know, project and put out there that your worth and your value is placed by what you have in terms of commitment and children. It's a grieving period where you're actually grieving the fact that, wow, I thought that by now my life would be at this place. I still own my decisions. I'm not going to settle for the bare minimum. I'm not going to stay in a place where I'm unhappy. Why should you attach all these milestones that you want to achieve in your life to achieving them with someone else. You hear my chat? Something to think about. All right, I'm here. It's another video. Let's chat, okay? That the Adi has sent me to speak to the ladies. Hi everybody, welcome back. It is another video and I thought let's get cool, let's get comfortable, let's get cozy, let's chat, okay? Um, as you know, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. You do it so well, you do it all the time. I do appreciate you. If you want to be a member of the membership space, you can definitely join the JK space. It is in a join button, which is somewhere down here below. I think it's on my right. I'm not. Mm -hmm. So what's up, everybody? It is another Real Talk video, and I was specifically sent here by Ndade Ari to speak to you guys about being single in your 30s navigating dating and loneliness. Yeah. This was specifically suggested by one of you guys who suggested that I speak about this in my community tab. So definitely read what I say in my community tab, especially if you have any suggestions or ideas on what you would like to, me to speak about, especially when it comes to the real talk videos. The unpopular opinions kind of got that covered. Candid with Cat kind of got that covered but especially with the real talk videos, because sometimes, sometimes you got to get real about stuff, you know? And that's why I'm here and I'm drinking my tea and we're going to talk about being single, dating, over 30, more specifically over 35, which was a, requ um, a suggestion by one of you guys. I'll put it somewhere here so you can see it. So yeah, if you're ready, let's get into the video. Let's. Firstly, I think where we can start with, I mean, who more perfect to do this video as somebody who is in their 30s, above 35, and I'm single, and I don't have any kids, I'm not married, nothing like that, and navigating potentially dating in the near future. I mean, I have dated before in my 30s, so I still can talk about this, but potentially walking into dating again now at the stage that I'm in my life. Whew. Hectic stuff. But I think the best point to start at is let's look at what society has done, the socialization of what life should look like when you are in your 30s as a female and what you should have achieved or what should be happening in your life especially when you're 30s, right? Because we're in this patriarchal society, I feel like what has happened is that we are now expected, especially when you're a woman over your 30s, your sort of society has romanticized marriage and children so much so that it's imparted this view that if you do not have that that there might be something wrong with you are you the problem why are you single i actually have a really big problem with people who ask why are you single i think it says a lot more about them asking us the single ones those questions and it says a lot about us who are receiving those questions and if you are receiving that question good for you 
And I'll tell you why when we get a little bit later on into the video. I think society has demonstrated this romanticization of once you're above your 30s, you should have your life kind of figured out. You should have, you know, some sort of a serious commitment relationship that you should be in. You should be either married or seriously committed with children, A, B, C, Z. As if having the opposite of that, uh, where you're single, you don't have kids, you're not married is frowned upon. Let's be honest. Let's be frank. People seem to look at people who are in their 30s and think, huh, why are you in your 30s? You seem like you're such a great person. Why are you single? Why don't you have any kids? Forgetting that sometimes for many people, uh, many women, they might be single by choice. Some might be single out of the fact that, look, Sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't. Um, but because society has romanticized this version of yourself, that when you're in your 30s, mid-30s, 40s, you should have your life down, especially when it comes to commitment and children, marriages, what, what. And I think that's a little bit unfair. Definitely it puts a lot of pressure on women specifically, I'm speaking to women in this video, but women and men who are not in that place in their life. And I think it's largely due to the patriarchal society that we live in. If you Every young woman's goal is to meet someone. They're all like, I want to meet someone, I'm going to meet a guy. It is because we live in a patriarchal society that needs women to buy into the pressure of getting married before the age of 30. And the reason for that is because after 30, women usually catch on. We catch on to the reality of marriage and motherhood. And we also recognize the glorified version that was sold to us our entire lives. For example, all the princess movies that we grew up on, the fact that most women's milestones are not celebrated at large scale unless they are related to marriage and motherhood. And this idea that older women are single simply because they are on track to be cat ladies or because all the good guys are taken is not only wrong, but it's also another scare tactic to get younger women to settle for the wrong relationships. I am in my early 30s and I'm going to be honest and tell you the truth right now. The reason why it is harder yet simultaneously easier to date after your 20s is because as you age, you generally become wiser. You are more grounded in yourself. You are also more established in your career, which means that you are more financially stable. And you're also more clear on the things that you want for your life and also the traits that you are looking for in a partner. Older women are generally dating from a place of confidence and abundance instead of scarcity and panic, which means that we are looking for a partner who is a positive addition to our already fulfilled lives. Single, happy women, especially those who are older, are a threat and that is why there is still suspicion around us and also still a negative connotation about us in society. Whether you are single for now or because you permanently want to be single, you should just keep doing what you want to do because there is truly no rush and you can never be late to the timeline of your own life. If you think about it, how many men actually get asked? questions like that. Like, why are you single? I think because we live in a world that is solely designed for the prosperity, uh, growth and evolution of men as opposed to women, women often get the shorter end of the stick, especially when it comes to things like this. If you look at a man who is 35 or uh, 39 or whatever, and he's single, it's very, very rare that you will have that same man say, you know, everywhere I go, I'm asked about why don't I have kids? Why am I not married? Why am I this? It is very rare. It's a rare occurrence. And for women, it almost happens every single day. If you are engaging with family, if you're engaging with colleagues, with your friends, you have this something, you know, that something will happen that will make you confronted with these kinds of questions and these kinds of topics each and every single day. And I find that rather unfair and quite frustrating. But one of the things that we also do not talk about much is the judgment that comes with 
being over a certain age and not being in a committed relationship, married, whatever, and not having children. It's almost like you walk around with this writing on your face, on your body, everywhere, that something is wrong with this person. Something is totally off. What is going on with you? And so Ndate Aris said, go over to the kids there on the channel and speak to them and help them understand why it's not entirely a bad thing. That um, I think another one of the things is definitely comparison. Almost like if you, you need to look a certain way or live a particular lifestyle or, you know, um, yeah, you know, pretty privilege, all of that. It's almost like it's only those kinds of people who are most likely to be fortunate enough or lucky enough to find a long-term commitment. So what's wrong with me? Oh, I'm not pretty enough. Oh, I don't have the body. Oh, I am too focused on my work that I don't have time for, you know, making sufficient time to date and to be out and about and meeting people. Oh no, I'm an introvert. So chances are quite high that I will not, um, because I hardly ever go out, chances are high that I might just not meet the person that I would love to settle down with or to be with, that kind of thing. Lots of comparisons that if I do not look a particular way, then I won't have a fair shot at being in a relationship or being with someone and finding a long-term commitment and having children. And I think it's those societal pressures that have been put and placed, especially on women, because of the society we live in, that make it so difficult for women to own the fact that I am single and actually be okay with it that. It is rather difficult having to navigate the spouts of loneliness when you are single. And this doesn't only happen to people in their 30s, it happens to people in their 40s, 50s. Loneliness is a real part of life, especially when you are single. It happens. And I think a lot of people shy away from speaking about it because it's like, but why are you lonely? You're probably lonely by choice. You don't have to be lonely, blah, blah, blah. As if loneliness carries this amazing form of weight on it that should determine who you are, what point in your life you should be in, and that it's a problem for you to be lonely. For me, I don't quite get that, okay? And I think because of the loneliness, because of being over 35 or 33, 38, wherever you are in your 30s, you get this moment of loneliness. It leads a lot of us to make very desperate decisions because we want to commit and we want to start our lives with someone new and have children and all of this. So because you're running away from that loneliness and you're running away from that desperation, it's almost like you end up making decisions that you shouldn't be making. Dating people that give you the absolute bare minimum, dating people that are merely just above average, dating people that are just not for you and not your type of person or the type of partnership and commitment that you look for, but because you do not want to be single and lonely based on what society looks at you as, right, when you are in that space in your life, you end up making decisions that you really don't want to be making or ending up with people that you really don't want to end up being with just because you're avoiding that everybody gets lonely. There are people that are in relationships as well that get lonely. There are people that are in spaces with people where they are surrounded by people and suffer from spouts of loneliness. You don't, you're not lonely every day, right? But the norm is once you get to a certain age, because you may have expected your life to lead into a certain way, you may have expected your life to be at a certain point at this time of your life, that it, it gets kind of lonely, right? It gets, it's almost like, I think what we do need to talk about is 
it's a grieving period when you are in that loneliness, when you have those loneliness days, it's a grieving period where you're actually grieving the fact that, wow, I thought that by now my life would be at this place. Let's talk about grief for a minute. And I'm not talking about death in the family grief. I'm talking about, I thought my life would be different at this stage of, of the game grief. Um, I thought this relationship would last forever grief. I thought my friends would be here for me um, in meaningful ways, grief. Um, I thought my health would be better at this point, grief. I thought my finances would be in a different place, grief. I'm talking about these significant life disappointments. And a lot of times when we feel those, uh, sometimes we try to, to rush past the sadness that we feel and try to give ourselves the old pep talk. And I realized that in trying to rush past uh, the sadness and rush past those feelings, um, that in stifling my grief, I was also stifling my growth. I'd be married, I'd have two kids, white picket fence, all of this. And then life happened and life showed you a different, uh, it showed you a different outcome. Ooh, my phone was gonna fall. Wow, wow. And you got a different outcome from life. You know, so now you're grieving what you thought, maybe even after you came out of a long term relationship where you could see that future, you know, just beaming and gazing at you in the distance. And you're like, I'm going to go far with this person. I have I see a commitment and all of that. And if you've been following me for a while, you would know that the last relationship that I was in, that's exactly how I saw it. I saw it as if that, well, I think I done found somebody, we can settle down, we get each other, da 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 da, da. not necessarily marriage in my, in my uh, opinion, in my sense, in my life, not necessarily marriage, but a long-term commitment. And that changed. And I had to then now grieve the fact that, well, I thought that this could have been something that I was in for the long haul, and I had to grieve the fact that it wasn't. It just wasn't. And I had to be okay with that. And I think one of the things that we do need to speak on is the fact that that level of desperation of wanting something, wanting this commitment so much exacerbates the loneliness, right? Once you see yourself in a position where you're like, okay, well, I'm single now. But if you let go of that fear and that desperation for wanting that commitment and actually seeing it as if, well, I'm single, something didn't work out, it's fine, I'm in my 30s, it didn't work out because I want more for myself. It didn't work out because this just wasn't cutting it for me. It didn't work out because whatever, but it was a choice that you made to say that I'm okay with starting afresh. I'm okay with being by myself and being in my own space. I'm okay with doing all of that. Then you change your mindset from being one of desperation and loneliness and lack of hope and just despondency, right? When it comes to your life and your personal life, you change the mindset from that to the fact that, you know what, I still own my decisions. I'm not going to settle for the bare minimum. I'm not going to stay in a place where I'm unhappy. You do not need a reason to be single. You need a reason to not be single. You need to be earned. Someone has to come in your life and make it seem like it's a better idea to do life with them than it is to do it by yourself. If things don't get easier when they arrive in your life, that's not the right person for you. But some of y'all care more about the title of a man than the spirit inside that man. I'd rather be single than be in a relationship with a mother that drains me. So when you ask me why I'm single as if I gotta give you a special reason to justify me picking me, no, someone needs to give me a special reason for me to pick them also, to choose them also, to dedicate my life to them also. And if that person hasn't earned that from me, it ain't a me thing, it's a them thing. I ain't met one of those yet. I think it's also the fear, right? The fear. That loneliness is encompassed with some desperation, sprinkle of desperation, 
Now, better spring sprinkle of desperation, spring sprinkle of fear. And it's the fear of, wow, the acknowledgement and the realization that I might not have this. I might actually go through my whole life not settling down, not committing, not being married for some, not having children for others, and the fear of not having a lifetime partner that you can share that stuff with. That is a very valid fear to have. No man is an island, right? We're all surrounded by family, by friends, by lovers, by this, that, and the other. No man is an island. And I suppose when you get to this certain part of your life, you think that, wow, I seem to be so stable that this one thing or these two things that I would love to have in my life would complete the picture of my life. What about your life right now isn't complete outside of the fact that these are the things that you want? Do you feel in, incomplete because you do not have a partner, because you do not have somebody that you are sharing your life with? Do you feel like you're incomplete? I'd like you to ask yourself that question. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to break my own boundaries. I'm not going to be gaslit or manipulated and still stick around for the sake of the fact that I, I don't want to be alone and single in my 30s. Once you shift that mindset, everything changes. For me, I look at being single in my 30s and I think, well, some stuff didn't work out. It's cool, but I still have a really good life. I don't place my worth and my value on the fact that I have a long-term commitment with someone else or on the fact that I have children, or on the fact that I am falling into that space of society that is expected of me as somebody who is in my 30s. No, I don't see it like that. I don't place my worth and my value. And I think that is the big mistake that society has seemed to you know, project and put out there that your worth and your value is placed by what you have in terms of commitment and children. And I think that's what makes it so much harder for women who are single and not dating or single and looking for love, but are single, you know, they, they unwillingly single. They didn't want to be single, but here we are. This is the situation right now. And I'm somebody who does not place my worth and my value on another person. I do love to be in a relationship. Please don't get me wrong. I do love to be in a relationship. I am the most romantic of romantic people. I love love. And I always tweet this on X rather. I always post this on X and I say, one thing you can never make me hate is love or falling in love and being in love. Do I miss being in love and the feelings and the, the, the feelings that come with that? Do I miss being able to share my day with somebody um, or to be able to spend my weekends with somebody or to be able to come home to someone? Absolutely. That is part and parcel and it's normal. It's part of life. However, do I place my worth on having those things in my life? No. There are many other things that are not identity bearing for me and marriage, children, what, what is not identity bearing for me. One of the biggest things to be able to combat through navigating through your single season is to be able to know what do you place your value and your worth in when it comes to yourself. What are your belief systems? How do you self-identify, right? I place a lot of... Um, uh, worth and value on 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 family, on my career, on building myself and evolving myself as a person, on growth and healing, on traveling, on living and enjoying my life. Because the thing about being in your 30s is you've kind of gotten a lot of the things you want figured out. You have a stable income, you're working, you are traveling, you're actually enjoying your life. But it's because of this little thing that society has instilled to be so important that you should have, that you feel like because there is a lack in your life, that something is missing. 
And that's not the case. That's not the case. So I did say a little bit earlier on that shift your mindset. Don't make it about the fact that, wow, I am single. Wow, I am lonely. Wow, I am desperate. This is the time for you to work on other parts of yourself. While you are looking and being in the season of waiting, right? Because we're waiting for it. We, we want for it to come. You know, not marriage for me, but maybe a long-term commitment, sure. We want for it to come, but we're in the season of waiting. And because you're in the season of waiting, this is the time where you can involve in other parts of your life. This is the time where you can work on yourself. This is the time where you can work on the relationships that you have with your family, your friends. This is the time where you can travel and not be accountable to anyone but yourself. This is the time where you can buy that house, buy that car, if you can. Why should you wait to be able to buy those things with someone else? or being in a relationship with someone else. Men don't do that. But I feel because women feel like once you reach a certain space in your life, you would love to be able to do those things with someone else. Men go out and buy their dream cars at 33. Men go out and buy their homes at 35. There are women who do that now, thankfully. Thank the Lord, I'm one of them, okay? So there are women who do that now, but what is stopping you? Why should you attach all these milestones that you want to achieve in your life to achieving them with someone else? You hear my chat? Something to think about. What you can do is also acknowledge the fact that the person that you want to come into your life is someone who should add value to it. This is someone who's going to add to your val to the value of you and your life and the quality of your life. They're going to add to it. So you do not want somebody who's going to come into your life to fill a void. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't want someone to come into your life to just fill that void of loneliness and desperation. No, you want someone who's going to come into your life and add to your life and make it a better quality of life, right? Make you feel better about the life that you're already currently living. They just elevate that for you, you know, mentally, spiritually, financially, whatever. They just elevate that. They add to it, to your values, to your belief systems, to your uh, thoughts, ideologies of what love is for you, how it should look like and how it should feel. So they should add to that, not subtract, not take away and not to fill in a void. You know what I'm saying? So once you look at it in the aspect that they should be adding to my life, it changes your whole mindset when it comes to um, relationships and seeing your single season as a, as a different time and not as a time of loneliness and desperation and failure. Like you've just, you failed at, at, at finding someone or, 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 or being a mother or whatever. No, you haven't failed. Yeah, you genuinely haven't failed. Okay. Once you get to your thirties, here's the thing, your single season might be prolonged. Okay. As opposed to when you're in your twenties, in your twenties, your single season is very short and fleeting, right? You can easily jump from relationship to relationship because you're having fun, man. You know, you're just going out, you're dating, whatever, you know, um, that's cool. That's not a problem, right? But when you're in your thirties, intentionality should be your best friend. Intentionality, when it comes to dating with a purpose, will shift your mindset when it comes to dating in your 30s or your single season in your 30s. You date with a purpose. You date with intentionality. You don't just go around and accept each and every date invite. You don't accept each and every person who's going to come into your life and say to you that, you know what, um, I really want to make this work. I really, da, 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 da. I really want to get into a relationship with you, whatever they say. I don't know what these young people say, what the youth say. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the youth say, bro, but you date with purpose. Now you date with intentionality. You literally, your list of your pros and cons is so in your face that you look at it every day that you're not willing to compromise on that. Okay, so 
in that way, when you date with purpose and intentionality, you're quite fine. You're okay with being single for a prolonged period of time. You're okay with that. It doesn't sit offside with you, make you feel more uncomfortable, this, that, and the other. No, you're perfectly fine being in your single season because you know that you're not going to sacrifice or compromise what you deem important to have in a relationship just because, just so that you can have somebody around. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I was having a conversation with a man recently and he was saying to me, you know, for me, as long as um, she takes off like 50% of what I want. And I said, 50%? Absolutely not. As much as there are certain things that you can compromise on, work through, work towards with a partner, 50% is no. Halfway mark, how did you ever feel when you got 50% when you passed in school? You were not happy about it. As much as you passed, but you passed with 50%, you were not happy about it. So when he was like, no, the woman that I'm looking for, look, as long as she can take off 40, 50% of what I look for in a partner, I'm fine. And I said, Ma I need him at least to match 80% of what I look for, at the very least. Not 50, not 40 and if he or she is not, I'm not interested. It's just going to give me more to work with. And relationships are work, yes. But you shouldn't feel like you are toiling. I don't think relationships should feel like that. They shouldn't feel like you are toiling and you're working so hard and it's just not coming together and it's just not making sense. They should not feel that way. So... Maybe see it in that aspect as well. Reality, I'm going to end it off with this. Sometimes it really just does boil down to luck. Honestly, some people just get into that place in their lives where they are lucky enough to meet someone who they can start a life with, commit to, and it just seamlessly flows. Sometimes it's all down to luck. And it has nothing to do with you and has nothing to do with the type of person that you are. And it has nothing to do with the fact that, yeah, well, for the sins that you, you did back then, this is what you, you're going to reap. Unfortunately, you're not going to get into a commitment and have children and whatever. No, no. All it boils down to is luck. You happen to be in the right place in the right time. And you end up meeting somebody. And lo and behold, you can commit to one another. And there's an understanding between the two of you. Are disagreements going to happen? Absolutely. Disagreements are normal in every relationship. In fact, they are necessary. If you do not disagree with a partner, kunda off, something is wrong. But if you do disagree, but fortunately you find someone who's willing to do the work with you and work, work and move past that, then you're fortunate. Then luck was on your side. God was sprinkling. When God was, was throwing out golden dust of people who are going to be fortunate, fortunate enough to be in long-term commitments and have children, you were front, front and center, first in line. And that's good. But to some of us, luck hasn't been on our side yet. In the meantime, while luck is not on your side in this particular aspect of your life, let it be on your side with other things. Focus on other things until you can get to a point where you're like, okay, now, now I'm good. Feels like I've, I've met, I've met, I've met my person. So to close it off, I think, look, it is all about your mindset. It is okay to be single and not dating. It's okay to be single and dating when you're in your 30s, 33, 35, 37, 8, 9. And in your 40s, it's okay. It says a lot about you knowing what you want, that you chose to go the hard route. Because the reality is we can get into relationships and can get married and can get whatever, but we'll know that for me to have gotten into that marriage and into that relationship and have those kids, I have been through a lot. There are people who are lonely and married. 
And there are people who feel like their lives aren't fulfilled, yet they have children. There are people who hate their children. I was watching the Menendez brothers thing, Monsters, on Netflix. And I was on the floor, even though it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's based on a true story, but a lot of the stuff was embellished. But when I saw this mom in her therapy session saying, I hate my kids. And that's, that's not the first time I hear that that some parents hate their children or they hate their spouses and they're lonely and all of this. So because you chose to go the harder way around, pat yourself on the back for that. It says a lot for you to actually say, I'm not going to, no, no, I'm not going to commit. I'm not going to commit just because I want to put a ring on my finger. Then you're living your life from a mindset that is not one of lack or desperation or fear. You're living your life from the mindset that says, I know what I want and I'm quite intentional about it. And if it doesn't meet these needs or, or this, if it doesn't exceed my expectations and it's just the bare minimum or it hurts me more than it makes me happy and I'll choose to stay single, then good on you. Kudos. Kudos to you. It's okay. I guess that's what Ndate Are said I must tell you guys. Ndate Are was just like, talk to the girlsies and the boysies because it seems like they're going through it. And that's how I approach my season of singleness. And I hope you approach yours the same way too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe, join the membership space if you care. Thank you so much as always for choosing me over and over again while you're in your season of wait. Just wait and be patient. It's okay. It'll come. It'll come for you. And eventually, in the meantime, in the meantime, focus on other parts of your life. Grow yourself. Evolve yourself. Do that while you are in wait. I'll see you in the next video. Sayonara.